Hello YouTube, it is Champion DJK coming at you again with another weekly episode and as usual I've got some pretty cool stuff to show you. It's been an interesting week, um, you know, kind of had to take an involuntary vacation from work and haven't been able to leave my house for the last, you know, eight or so days. Um, so yeah, you could probably take one guess at why, uh, but yeah. Anyway, I'm feeling good though. Everything is is a okay with me and the fam, so no worries there. Uh, but yeah, get to go back to work uh, <laughs> in the middle of the week here. So anyway, let's just get right into it. Um, I've got some cool stuff. I got some cool stuff from the mail. Um, I found some stuff in stores, but that was last week. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna we'll just go through all that. We're gonna open up some stuff. It's gonna be your pretty much your usual episode. Uh, we've got from Surplus Goodies Global 64 here, Tarmac Works Pagani Huayra. Uh, this is pretty sweet. You guys know I really like the uh, Global 64 line from Tarmac Works. Uh, it's pretty fantastic. So we're gonna go ahead and open up that um, surplus. Uh, Jimmy from Surplus actually sent me one of these to show you. It is a Weekend of Wheels Zinger. It's the Auto World Truck Casting Johnny Lightning Zinger. Anyway, uh, for Weekend of Wheels, uh, these are pretty neat. They're going to be pretty desirable. You can uh, get them from Surplus Goodies uh, right now. We're going to open up that uh, as well. Pretty cool. Um, and then we've got... Uh, I got some stuff from J Car Diecast that I picked up in his Black Friday sale. Um, so I finally got these CS Customs. I'm trying to assemble all of these freaking square bodies uh, from Auto World for the year, not even including the Ultra Reds, just the regular guys. And there's still, I think, one or two I'm missing, which, dang it. Uh, one of the ones I'm missing that's going to be really probably hard to get is going to be the Saleo Diecast Dinner Car Exclusive, which is the, uh, it's like a, it looks like a White Lightning um, Chevy Square Body. If anybody's got a lead on one of those that is somewhat like affordable, uh, let me know. And um, I would like to check that one off the list because it's not a chase. And I would like to have everything uh, together. I'm going to write a Lamley article on all the square bodies that came out in 2021. And I think that's going to be the one that I'm going to have a problem uh, acquiring. So anyway, there's that. I got these two off the list, though. That's fantastic. And then, um, and I'm not going to count the Johnny Lightning Zingers. Because even though I think I do have an example of all of them that are out, yeah, that's just too much. Um, also, I think he was blowing these out too on his website. So I had finally grabbed this Lamborghini Huracan um, Shuko European Classics. So that's pretty cool too. Uh, and then we got, see, also in the mail, I got mi this one mini GT. Had to get this uh, Corvette C7R or C8R. C8R. That's C7. C8. The IMSA. 2020 IMSA, 24 hours of Daytona. Pretty cool. Uh, picked that up. This was an eBay purchase. Got a Smokey and the Bandit Johnny Lightning Firebird. Finally got this one off the list. Uh, finally found it cheap. Well, it was an auction. Bid on it and won it. A uh, lot cheaper than typical buy it now prices for this thing. So I was definitely happy to check that one off the list. Um, and then this I actually got from my buddy Todd, I think a while back. I've just had it sitting in the drawer. So another Johnny Lightning Firebird. Might as well open it up now. So I got that. And then uh, in stores I found a week or two ago, and I didn't know what to do, but I, I've been sick of waiting for my pre-order for this latest Auto World set from 3000 3, Toys is typically where I pre-order from just because of the price is usually the least expensive. Um, but I decided to go ahead and pick this up. So this is release 3 version B. I actually picked up the full release. Uh, actually found them at a Walmart. That was about a week, week and a half ago. Um, so yeah, picked these up. And then my buddy Zach diecast Mansur, 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 sorry buddy, uh, I got this from him, he gave me a good buddy price on this, he found this in the store, so I have one ultra red checked off of this set already, 
Um, need to get the version A card, but I got two sealed cases coming someday. Uh, so hopefully those will come. And maybe we'll pull an Ultra Red out of there. I don't know. Uh, but yeah. Probably going to open all those. We'll kind of see how things go here. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it. So other than that, it's just been a it's been a weird week and not exactly fun. Um, but everything's okay, so that's good. And yeah, I don't know what I'm going to show you next week. I think I got a couple things coming. We'll see. And then I'll be fine and ready to go to our local meet is next weekend. So maybe I'll pick up some good stuff there. We'll see. But you got to just stay tuned to find out. All right, let's go ahead and flip the camera around. Well, we got quite a bit to look at, so keep her tuned. All right, so let's kick off the second half of this video with this wild thing right here. Uh, this Rat Fink 1979 Chevy Silverado 2021 Weekend of Wheels exclusive, limited to 4,992 pieces. So they actually made quite a few of these. Uh, I'm sure there's a white lightning of it. Of course, I don't have that. Um, again, if you're a Rat Fink fan, this is a must-have. If you're a Square Body fan, this is probably a must-have. If you're a Zinger fan, this is definitely a must-have. Um, and might be a tough one to get later on. Hard to say. Uh, we got the Nuclear Mines design card art, which is really cool. They've been He's been doing a lot of card art for some of these uh, Johnny Lightning Auto World exclusives. Um all sorts of stuff so this comes from house of cars it's a cool looking thing um it's neat and like i said surplus goodies has got them uh so you know shout out to jimmy uh go ahead and check him out i think he's probably listed him to his ebay uh, you can contact him through facebook uh through instagram all that good stuff let's go ahead and get her open and check her out that's cool. Yeah, you don't often see uh, zingers with rubber wheels. Now, they've made them, you know, there's been quite a few zingers that have been made with them. It's just not really recently. I don't think a bunch have been made. But this one's got rubber tires, which is kind of a cool um, thing with these. Yeah, they are both rubber. Big, fat, meat slicks in the back. Diecast products and more. Ooh, we got a jacked up. Ooh, we got a jacked up tailgate on this one. Ooh, uh oh. Did I just? No. Nope. She's fixed. Or not? Did I break it? Oh, I think I just did. Well. It's not a big deal, really. It, it was kind of like stuck up in position, and I just kind of pushed it down, and I think I just broke it. But it actually fits straight on there now, so that's good. Anyway, not a big deal. I almost wish they wouldn't have even bothered with this tailgate. There's just no... I mean, I like moving... Oh, there we go. Now it's snapped back into place. Okay, so I didn't break it. I just had to move her. I think it's it's stuck up on this side too. I could probably push it down over here. Uh, maybe I'll play with that off a of camera. You guys don't really need to watch me do that. I just don't, something happened with this thing being put on and it wasn't quite put on correctly. But there you go, Weekend of Wheels, Rat Fink. It's kind of a rare one. It's gonna be a real desirable one. I don't know, people go nuts over the zingers for whatever reason. I'm, you know, I'm not 100% into them. Uh, but there are people that just, that they just love the zingers. And this is going to tick a lot of boxes here from different collectors' perspectives because you got the square body collectors are going to be after this one, the rat fink collectors, whatever, the zinger collectors are going to be after this one. So there's a lot of people, basically, is what I'm trying to say, that are going to be, you know, into this one. This is going to be, uh, desirable vehicle for a bunch of different types of collectors uh so yeah anyway get them while they're hot surplus goodies has got them and then uh surplus goodies has also got these global 64 tarmac works paganis so tarmac global 64 line has really taken off this year um 
with a bunch of new models. I mean, they had, I think they had the Mustang that came out. They got a two. This is another Pagani. They had the Zonda R. Uh, they had the Mercedes. It was like that Lamley exclusive one. Um, so very, very cool. If you're not familiar with the Global 64 line, we'll school you real quick. They come in that clamshell packaging that is kind of resealable, which is nice. There's not a ton to look at on the card art, so we'll kind of skip over that, sorry. Um, these are generally less expensive than your like Hobby 64 or Road 64 line from Tarmac Works. Uh, the other thing is, is they are metal base, metal body, rubber tires, and they generally, they roll. So in that regard, they're very much like Mini GT. Now I've said that a couple of times, but kind of a similar philosophy to Mini GT with these Global 64 cars. And oh yeah, there's been an Aston Martin this year too. This one's really nice. I like it. I don't like the Huayra as much as I like the Zonda. I think the Zonda just looked cooler. But, you know, there's a lot of nice details in this. Look at this. The rear looks really, really good. Those little blue uh, exhaust pipes look really cool. The color is okay. It's not my favorite. It's a darker blue. It's kind of tough to see all the details in this color where you got black on top and blue on the sides. Uh, but, man, this, uh, like any other, the Global 64... It's got the rubberized mirrors, too. Like any other Global 64 line that have come out, I, I'm really, really impressed with it. I think it looks really good. Quality control seems spot on, and yeah, I am. I'm digging it. I think it's pretty cool. Pretty neat. All right, so there's that one. We'll get that one out of the way. And then uh, what should we look at next? We might as well look at a Mini GT. Might as well follow it up with a Mini GT. We got the Corvette C8R number three, Corvette Racing 2020 IMSA 24 Hours of Daytona. MSA. GM licensing on the back. This is for 14 and older. And you guys know Mini GT is pretty much one of my favorite brands. You guys know I dig them. All right, so here we are with this Corvette. Um, I'm sure it's accurate, but it looks goofy as hell here. how far those wheels stick out. I've noticed that in pictures too. I mean, that's it's probably race car accurate. Do those rims really stick out that far in the race car? I didn't look at pictures of the of the real car, so I I can't say, but you see what I'm saying? The wheels, they stick out. Are they supposed to stick out like that? Someone will know in the comments and they'll let me know. Um But yeah, that was the only kind of goofy thing I thought about this car was how, and it looks like it's, I don't know. I just noticed that in pictures and you can really see it here. How the rim sticks out of the tire and then it sticks out of the wheel well. And it does it on both sides, so it's not like an issue like that. Uh, as usual for Mini GT, this thing rolls. This thing looks pretty awesome. Uh, again, they did a great, fantastic job with this. Now, um, I believe Greenlight's released this exact like livery, and so has Hot Wheels, like standard Hot Wheels. Actually, Hot Wheels has did it, done it in a premium, too, because they did it in the, um, uh, what, what have you, Team Transport lineup. But I did not grab those cars out but you know obviously i'm gonna have to uh hang tight all right so i grabbed the uh here's a premium hot wheel so you can kind of see how decent they did the job on this thing i think they did pretty good 
Uh, it's got like the inserted details for the headlights because it's part of the windshield piece. Got the red side mirrors. So there's a lot of details in here that they got right uh, for a Hot Wheel. And then here's this one, and obviously this one's quite a bit more detailed. Uh, Scale-wise, this one's definitely wider. Looks a lot lower to the ground, too. Uh, Lengthwise, I bet you they're pretty much right on, and they are right on. So that's cool. So yeah, I, I mean, I'm digging it. I, it looks pretty good. The mirrors look massive. Don't those mirrors look huge? Are those scale accurate? Somebody let me know that. They just look... I don't know if in the front they don't look too big. The side they look... I don't know, they just look huge. You know, in comparison to these, look how tiny those look. I don't know. Is that accurate? Is that accurate? You guys will inevitably let me know in the comments. But yeah, insert of details for taillights and headlights. That's pretty cool looking. I was excited for this one to come out. And it really doesn't disappoint. The only thing still, again, that's weird is just the, the front wheels seem to stick out a little bit. I've noticed that in pictures, and maybe that is how the cars are in real life. I don't know. Could be. Maybe. I don't I don't know. All right. So there's that. Uh, let's see here. What shall we look at last? I'm going to, um, or next, we're going to do the Shuko Lambo. Um, so kind of an interesting mix of stuff we got here today. I think we're going to end the day with just looking at all the auto world I've got to look at. Uh, so let's go Shuko Lamborghini Huracan. Of course, I didn't do any pre-cutting. This was a uh, MJ Toys or Mio exclusive. I don't think they sold really well, though. Uh, 2,400 pieces. I don't think these things sold really well because I... And I'm, I'm going to tell you why. I can tell you why. And it's because the color is just, on this Lamborghini, just leaves a little bit to be desired. It's, and that's why I held off on getting it. I love Shuko. I love these Shuko Lambos. I've got uh, them in a few different colors. But this this blue with the stripe is just not, it's just not, it just isn't very, I don't know, attractive. It's so dark. I mean, uh, it just, it kind of, it's a matte finish, but it kind of like, it's the paint's a little bit thick, so it kind of washes out some of the details in the, in the casting. Uh, I mean, it looks good. It's not bad. We've got the headlight detail. We've got, you know, the, the tooling is cool. The tooling is pretty decent. It's an older Shuko tooling, actually. It's been around for quite a while. Um, but in this color... Is just kind of I could see why these ended you know hobby dealers ended up having to blow these out. It's just it's not it just isn't very it's not a great color for 164 scale. And actually it's kind of a, not a great color. Period. I'm, I'm not a big fan of it. I don't think I'd ever buy a car this color. I don't know. You guys let me know what you think in the uh, in the comments, of course. Uh, so let's see. We got two Johnny Lightnings. So yeah, not spending much time on this one. And then we got uh, it's a couple Johnny Lightnings here. We'll go through those, and then it's Auto World time. Um, you get a little card. This is an older Johnny Lightning. It is from 2000, probably three or four, judging by the date on the back. <coughs> and I don't know. Ooh, it's all right. I don't really collect this casting, but I sort of do. Now, the new Johnny Lightning Firebird tooling, which is actually an Auto World Deluxe tooling, that casting I will collect. Now, this one I have a few examples of, and I think that's probably enough. It does look pretty decent. It's got an opening hood. That's cool. Um, you know, in general, it's got some good detail. This is a legit, like, Firebird livery. So... Not terrible. Not too great, though. All right, next on the docket is the Smokey and the Bandit. Johnny Lightning, 1977 Pontiac Trans Am from Hollywood on Wheels. Some of these cars are very desirable, by the way. Um, 
kind of tough to get. I don't think I've ever seen the Skyline one or the 350Z from the Fast and the Furious set. Uh, the Love Bug's a good one. Any of the Dukes of Hazard stuff gets expensive. On the you know trying to find it now on eBay. So yeah, some of this stuff is kind of tough to get. I don't know how many of these they made. I couldn't have been. I don't know that many. Uh, let's see here. <clears throat> when did it come out? Probably like 2005 ish, is my guess, based on the date on the Mac. Came right off. Got to check this off my Firebird list for Johnny Lightning. I collect this casting. I wish Auto World would do a 77 Firebird. I think that would be cool. They probably won't just because they have this Johnny Lightning tooling to use, but. I'm just saying, wouldn't be upset with it if they decided to do it. So it looks pretty good, Smoking the Bandit. It's got your classic gold and black and looks pretty decent. Not quite as good as like the green light Smoking the Bandit uh, Firebirds. Those are more to scale and look a little bit better as long as you get one that's got good quality control. <clears throat> but before green light came out with those Trans Ams, like you know this was all you could get as far as like a detailed model went uh, before green light came out with that casting so i'm not going to open up the hood uh, and the reason is because the hoods are kind of notorious for not sitting down well on this casting it's at least the ones that i've got it's pretty hit or miss so i'm just gonna you know save myself the grief and we're not going to open that up and i'm just going to leave it shut because it is shut right now and it looks pretty good so pretty neat all right that is that. Let's move on now to Auto World. And I guess, you know, we're going to start with these. I avoided buying these for a while. And I'm kind of glad I did because J Car Diecast was having a bit of a Black Friday sale. And at least this one right here was like half price. Um, this one was still full price with the Golf logo. But this one was half price. Now, this is another one that ticks a lot of boxes for a lot of different collectors, right? We've got uh, a Zinger that happens to be a 55 Chevy, which is, of course, popular. Uh, we got a square body. And then we got golf colors. So, yeah. And these are limited to 1,008 pieces. These are a CS Customs exclusive. Um, so, we'll go ahead and open these up. I'm not a huge fan of the, the packs of these. I mean, they're okay. They're, they're, it's cool. I just, the trailers. I'm not, I have too many trailers in the collection I don't need anymore. I, I mean, I granted this will look cool as a set. It's just, you know the car, you know what I wanted out of it. And that was the Auto World truck. So we'll go ahead and just take it out. Featuring Johnny Lightning Zingers. Again, limited to 1,008 pieces. Lots of licensing and stuff on the back here. There you go. 10 year anniversary was 2021. For CS Customs. Chris Stangler. Seems to be kind of a nice guy. We'll go ahead and uh, he's done a couple of custom uh, ones. <coughs> Auto World releases. Um, I think what we're going to do, I'm just going to get both of these out because there's really no, not much difference in the, except for just graphics. So I'm going to cut the other one apart quick. So we got like sponsorship logos, including the golf logo and stuff like that, or, or none. Those are your two options. And both of these, again, limited to 1,008 pieces. Set that there. We'll set that there, and then the trailer will, whatever. We'll set behind here. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, the reason why I avoided purchasing these to begin with, because they were expensive. Uh, I want to say these things were like thirty-five some dollars a piece. It might have even been a little bit more, almost 40 bucks each, I think, or initially when they came out on the CS Customs uh, website. So I kind of avoided them uh, for a little bit, hoping I could get some help maybe from a uh, hobby dealer or something else. It's just 
that's a big chunk of change to spend like 80 bucks plus it's like shipping or whatever on uh, two and when i really only the ones i really only wanted were just the trucks themselves so anyway uh so you got phil d on the side here golf golf leading the way the fun uh, banner across the top it's the lifted Silverado um, Auto World casting looks pretty good this one is of course the same except for you don't have the windshield banner uh, the golf logo on the hood or the golf logo on the, the bed or the Phil well we got Phil D Troy H So other than that, they're the same. We got a woo, 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 woo. look at the woo, 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 woo. looks like we need an alignment. Um, yeah, these are wonky. Uh, it's fixable. We don't need to do it on camera though. Woo. Oh, they both do it. Well, whatever. And these have a trailer hitch on them. So there's that too. All right, so there's a look at the trucks, which is really the reason why I wanted them. And then the Zinger, it's a pretty cool Zinger. You got the plain orange one here, and then you got the one with the additional graphics. Stangler Customs, CS Customs, Chevy Powered. Eh, maybe could use a little bit more detail in the grill there. It's just a flat silver. Redline wheels. I mean, it's pretty cool. It's definitely going to be desirable for a Zinger collector. Again, those Zinger collectors, man. You ever see what White Lightning Zingers go for on eBay? It's nutty sometimes. I just don't understand it. But whatever. To each his own. That's the nice thing about diecast. There is just something for every type of collector, isn't there? And yeah, we got a little here on the side of this. Don't know if that'll rub off really don't even care technically because i'm not going to really collect does a door open on the side of this thing it appears as if it might i don't know if i I've never really yeah it does ah, there we go i never even noticed that the door opened on the side of these i know the back opens right somehow <clears throat> well i'm not going to get it right now I guess that's kind of cool. I'm not a huge fan of the enclosed trailer stuff. The only difference here is golf logo. That's it. Oh, and on the back too. I'm not a big fan of the enclosed trailer stuff because it just hides a car. So, but it's a kind of neat set. I get the point. And some people really, really like this stuff. It's just not. It's not really up my alley. All right. <clears throat> what are we gonna do, guys? Should we go through all these Auto World cars? Um, why not? I guess so. Make this a nice long video. So I don't have the version A yet, but we do have the version B. And here we go. I'm going to go over all these again um, once I get my sealed boxes. You can read all that if you want. Blue Jeans Metallic. 2019 Ford F-150. Lariat. It's actually one of the better looking versions of this truck. I'm normally not super excited about this casting. And this is no different. It's just, I think this is a really nice color for it. And yeah, good look for this truck. Especially with the, uh, the tan interior. I think I'm digging that quite a bit. So we'll go through these kind of quick. I'm so late to the game already on these. Usually... It's odd because usually I'll get my like pre-order before these start showing up in stores. Uh, but this time, no, not not the way that that's happened. These showed up in stores actually a while ago, uh, before anybody really showed them on YouTube, um, including Lamley. Um, he got his case late too. It's just uh, it's weird. Um, so some obviously some sort of supply chain issue I'm guessing with this with this set. Uh, F8 Green Metallic, 13,904. Check that out if you want to. This is number six in the series, 2019 Dodge Challenger SRT Hellcat. 
That's a pretty cool color for it. <clears throat> Came right off. The nice thing about, I guess, finding these in the store is I know there's no issues with any of them. I picked them out, you know. Um, you never know. There's always a chance that there's going to be issues, quality control issues when you get a sealed case. Plus, I could pull an ultra red, which means I'd be missing a regular one. So it's kind of nice. There were two full cases at this Walmart uh, when I found these. I'm not, I guess I'm not opening that hood. Um, and neither of them had an ultra red in it. This is really good looking. I love the color. It's deep green with uh, the black stripage. That's a good look for that car. I mean, it's a bit dark, but maybe it doesn't translate on cameras being that cool, but it's cool. Trust me. It's very cool. Um, <clears throat> we're saving, I guess, the Jeep for last, which is actually my favorite in the series. Spoiler alert. Uh, here is this guy. Everybody loves the 1983 Chevy Silverado 10 fleet side. First time they've done the 83 now, right? 17,120. They know it's going to be popular in white slash carmine new casting ish right they do like i think they have a tooling core or whatever for every single different year of the silverado up until like i don't know 80 whatever it is it's cool i like it it's approved quad headlights up in the front by far the most popular auto world tooling you guys all know that <clears throat> and I don't know there hasn't been a mix without a square body in a long time and I don't know if there's any coming out but then that's I'm sure there's nobody that's upset about it uh, but yeah looks really really neat It'll be interesting to see what happens when these things kind of run their course, if they ever do. <clears throat> Here's another one a lot of people were going to be very excited about, and it's the Toyota Supra. And not the first Supra that they've put out, but this one's in super red, 1994. Uh, because originally they came out without a wing, and now we've got them with the wing. And that's, of course, what everybody's used to. You can read that if you want. Some interesting stuff there. 13,904 pieces. I like this one. I don't know. I don't really like the chrome uh, rims. I like the silver rims better that they put on the initial release of this car. Other than the chrome. and But now you get it with the spoiler. And it looks pretty good with the spoiler. I almost prefer it without, to be honest. I don't know. It's just got kind of a cooler look to it to me. And the spoiler being an added on piece, you can see some gappage here. I'm sure that's going to be the quality of that's going to vary from item to item. Um, we've got tan interior. This one is one of the few auto worlds that comes with a uh, what have you lensed detail. I don't know if they did different motor details in this one or not. <clears throat> I thought for some reason, I don't know, some of the vehicles, I think they have different engine toolings. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, but this one's got the wing. So that's exciting for some people to have that wing. And it does look pretty nice. It looks pretty good in red. So... What do you guys think about the Supra? <clears throat> the winged Supra. All right. Next is, let's see, one, two, three, four. We got the fifth one here. This is 1966 Chevy Suburban in saddle, saddle poly. 14,600 pieces. That's a cool color for this. I like it a lot. It's a very strong set from Auto World. You 
you guys know Auto World's my jam. I've got an opening hood, of course, in this one. Ooh, it's not going. It's going up crooked. All right. Well, um, that's that's where we're going with that. It's done. Um, I'm not going to try to lift it any further. I'm sure I could without breaking it, but we're just not going to even risk it. It's fine. There's a motor under there. Trust me, there is. I think you can also, like, if you open this, you can push this back, kind of improve the gap here. That's been the major complaint with this casting has been the, the hood gap. See, on that side it goes in. Uh, on that side I'm almost able to push it in, but it doesn't want to stay. Anyway, I might play with that and probably won't, but I may. The color is awesome. Looks really good. Love that metallic gold. Quite good. Quite cool. All right, so there you have that. Pretty, pretty awesome. And then uh, definitely the highlight of the set is this mean looking Jeep. And I am not a Jeep guy, uh, but dang, does this thing look pretty awesome. This is 13,424 and granite crystal is the color. Uh, 2017 Jeep Wrangler Sahara Unlimited. So the version A of this doesn't have the roof rack, I don't think. But it is the lifted version. I'm curious to see if this sucker rolls. Uh, let's get it out of the package. And then after this, we're going to open up an ultra red of it. So I'm excited for that too. And oh, she rolls. And rolls well. Honestly surprised by that those big tires fit they're the same big chunk tires that you got on this so dang this is cool looking so i really like this one i this is fantastic of course opening hood on this one uh the color is really cool so it's like a metallic black and it just looks really awesome and then it's got some matte black you know, and some places on it as well. But in person, this thing just looks mean. Uh, hopefully it looks good on camera too, but this is just a really cool release. That just looks fantastic. All right, and then lastly, and we're almost done here, guys, the Ultra Red. Thanks again, Zach. Uh, we're going to go ahead and open this up. This is on the version B card, but of course it doesn't matter. You could find this exact vehicle on the version A. It does not matter. They will be found on both cards. And let's peep it. <clears throat> At least from this, we will be able to tell what the traits are for the Ultra Reds in this series. This one doesn't roll quite as well. Well, we know we got white tires. That's pretty obvious. Ultra Red body. We have a white interior, and we got an ultra red bait. Whoa, we're, that's why it doesn't roll very well. We're turning. This one's, this one's having a bit of a turn. Oh, no, or an issue. Wow. Apparently, it's tough to get these big ones on the axle right. I am... Oh, this one is... Look at this one. Hmm. You gotta be kind of careful when you're doing this, but I'm trying. Now, I don't know if this takes after version A or version B, and I don't think there's really any way to... Oh, it does have to take after version B, right? Because it's got the, uh, the top piece, and I don't think the version A car has that. From what I remember, uh, seeing pictures, because obviously I don't have them in hand. Uh, but yeah, our... Those are not on good. But uh, that's... It's whatever. It is what it is. I don't want to end up breaking them, but we do... I do kind of want them on straight. One way to do that is just to lay it flat, push your finger on it, and hope that the axle doesn't pop through the rim into your finger. Uh, we've made no improvement. <clears throat> anyway, that's something I can mess with off the camera if i decide to even mess with it it really doesn't matter because if you're just looking at it in a side profile you can't even tell and with it being white tires and stuff i don't think i'm going to be taking too detailed pictures of this thing who knows but 
Anyway, still really cool. All right, so there's that. Oh, you know what? These are crooked too. It's tough to get those uh, rims on there straight. Well, anyway, I still really like this release. It's very, very awesome. All right, that is it for this episode today. A nice long one for you. Next week might be shorter. It might be. You're, I guess you're going to have to tune in to find out. Um, let me know what you guys thought was your favorite thing of today. I would I have to say, honestly, it's probably, for me, it might actually be this Tarmac Works. Global 64 line. I li I'm liking him. Um, you know, I really like this uh, Corvette too. But that front wheel is just, I don't know, it bothers me. Even if it is accurate. And then this is really cool too. So just a lot of cool stuff today. I hope you guys enjoyed. Alright, thank you guys very much for watching. Have yourself a good day.